Basically, it starts with the, the bare science. So they would do that um, in a laboratory, then there will be some testing in animals like sheep, things like that. Once it's ready to actually get to an inhuman trial, then a clinical trial process starts with a safety trial or a phase one trial, then goes through to a phase two, which expands from doing a small group of people in phase one to see if it's actually safe to use in humans, to see if it's actually something that will actually work in comparison to what they use as a standard of care at the time. And then you go through to a phase three trial, which actually expands the trial out to use different ethnic groups, um, more males and females sort of like than you might have gotten in a phase two trial, trying to balance things, see if it works across everybody. Up until uh, uh, mid last year, we were involved in a phase one clinical trial with a company called Mesoblast, um, testing their, their stem cell product on patients to see if they're actually safe. And the, the patients we used were all uh, long bone patients, so they're all leg injury um, patients that had been non-union. That's a, a state that develops where the bone fails to heal after a six to nine month period. Mm -hmm. um, now, they all had the, the uh, product implanted surgically and then we followed up with them. Every patient um, would have stem cells in their body. So the way this, this clinical trial worked was we increased the number of stem cells that actually went into the area. In a normal patient, they would break a bone or have an injury of some sort and stem cells go with normal blood product into the area and then proteins in the body tell the stem cells what to develop into. So in the case of a broken bone, they, they develop into pre-bone cells and then those pre-bone cells lay down bone tissue. With the, the patients that we had, that none of them had actually sort of gone to that point of healing, instead of putting tens of thousands of stem cells into the area, we were able to actually put back tens of millions of stem cells and that increased their chances of healing. From the safety aspect, we had nobody who developed a, a trial product or a stem cell related um, injury or uh, reaction, uh, which was what that particular trial was looking at. Given that there was only 10 patients treated on the trial, um, out of those 10 patients, we actually had 11 fractures that were treated because um, one patient had a tibial, so an upper and lower leg fracture. Mm -hmm. So, out of those 11 fractures, nine of them actually healed. One healed a few weeks after the trial actually had finished, so it was considered a failure. But that was because it was a, a short um, follow-up. The stem cells we use to, to form bone can be used to, to form muscle tissue, um, vascular tissue, even skin. So, you know, with the right protein to tell the stem cell what to do, really, it is limitless. The biggest question I'd actually um, say to patients, do they actually feel comfortable with it? Given that it's not a proven technology, they need to be comfortable with it in themselves. The thing is, Having tested the thing in the lab, and maybe on animals, then we know, okay, what it'll do in the body for the therapeutic range. We don't know what it'll do in the body for non-therapeutic things, and that's what clinical trials are all about.